everybody, I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create three different types of play icons in Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna start off by creating a new Illustrator document, which you can select here if you are on this screen, or you can go up to File, New, and then a, the New Document dialog box will pop up. And I like to just do 1920 by 1080 and that'll be set to pixels. We're gonna create a couple different play icons, but based on what I show you here, you can actually iterate on those and create many more different types with different shapes and different stroke widths and outlines and things like that. So let's begin with the most basic shape in the play icon, and that is a triangle. So I'm gonna go over here to my tools and grab the polygon tool. This is what I think is the easiest way to create a triangle, and it's the one I recommend the most if you watch my how to create a triangle video. But with the polygon tool, all you have to do is click out here on the on the artboard, and you can select your number of sides. So I'm just gonna leave the radius at 50 pixels, and because we can change that later if we really want to. And the sides, a triangle has three sides. Fancy that, so make sure that says three and then hit okay. And we have a triangle. And currently this triangle is simply outlined. I, well, no, it has a uh, it has a fill of white. I'm gonna change that fill to black so that we can see it. And then what I'm gonna do is grab this triangle and if you hover around just above the corner here, you can click the rotate tool. I'm gonna hold shift to lock it into, uh, I believe 45 degree increments so you can rotate it 90 degrees or 45 degrees. And most play icons are a triangle on its side pointing to the right, so we're gonna Keep that as that. Congratulations, you just created your first play icon. If we expand this up by holding shift and option while clicking the corner, and then I use my alignment tools to center it up, check that out. That 19 by, uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, pixel dimensions of our artboard is actually what an HD video size would be. So you can sort of mock up what the play icon would look like on a video by keeping it within this artboard and just seeing what that looks like. I think I have preferred to use just the triangle lately, but we have also done different types. Let's get into those. So I'm gonna move this triangle by holding option, actually duplicate this triangle by holding option and dragging it, and I'm gonna hold shift while I do that to keep it, uh, you see that pink line there, it's gonna keep it sort of in the same, um, in the same or vertical space as this one. And I'm gonna let go over here just to duplicate that. And now we are going to create the second play icon. And that is a play icon with a circle around it. And I actually want it to be an outlined play icon. So I'm going to get rid of the fill by coming up here and dropping down the fill menu and selecting none. It's the little red slash. So now we have a nice little outline effect and I'm actually going to increase the stroke on that. Uh, let's do five and see where that lands us. Uh, we might do 10. All right, we're gonna keep that. And one other thing I'm gonna do, these edges are a little bit pointy for me. So I'm going to grab this shape and I'm actually gonna click on the word stroke to drop down the stroke panel. Inside of there, I'm going to change my corners from a sharp corner, like a 90 degree corner, to a rounded joint. Now we need to create a circle around this triangle. So we're gonna go back to our tools over here, our shape tools, and grab the ellipse tool. Now I'm gonna click and hold shift to keep this as a circle. If you don't hold shift, it's gonna turn it into an oval. So as soon as you hold shift, it's gonna lock it into that circle shape. And we're just gonna create it, oh, about twice the size of our triangle. So if you were to put the triangle down here and put two on top of each other, let's bring this down. I'm gonna hold shift still while I drag it down to make it twice the size of that triangle. I'm gonna delete one of these. And then if I select both the shapes and then click on the circle, now I can align it as a key object and the circle is the key object. So any other things we have selected are gonna to align to the circle. So I'm gonna open up this alignment panel over here again and I'm gonna do the horizontal align center and the vertical align center. And that will minimize that. Notice how our triangle is actually a little bit offset. It's because the center of the rectangle that goes around our triangle that sort of uh, contains that shape 
is actually not the center of the triangle. You'll see this is the center of the rectangle, whereas the center of the triangle is over here. So a lot of times I will just visually bump that over a little bit until I feel like it's about in the center. Now, after, uh, after further review, I believe that this triangle is a little bit too big, um, having the circle double the size. So I'm gonna hold shift and option, grab the corner and just scale that down a little bit until it feels like it's about the right size. Make that a little bit bigger. And that's about right. So now, like I said before, just sort of visually bump that over until you feel like your play icon, play icon is, is visually in the center of the circle. There you go. That is our outlined play icon in a circle form. Now, the last version we're going to create is a shape with the triangle knocked out of it. So I'm gonna grab this original triangle again and sort of bring it over here. I'm holding Option and Shift again to keep it in line and also to duplicate it. And now I'm gonna create a shape that I wanna knock out this triangle. So let's create, let's go for that YouTube looking, um, the YouTube looking play button. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you two ways to do that because some of you might be on CS6 or older versions of, uh, of Adobe Illustrator. And the first method I'm gonna show you is I think only in the Creative Cloud versions. So don't worry, if you're not updated, I'm gonna show you how you can uh, create the same effect as well. So I've got the rounded rectangle tool over here and I am going to click and drag it out. The, uh, if I hold shift, it'll create a, uh, a square, but I actually want a rectangle. So I'm just going to let that uh, stretch out a little bit horizontally uh, until I feel like it's about right. And I'd say that's about right. Now I want these, cor these corners are rounded, but I want them to be rounded even more. And to do that, I'm going to use the corner widget or the corner radius. You can select the pixels up here or you can actually grab these little uh, corner pieces here and bring them in to change the radius of the corner. If you're not seeing these here, make sure that in view, on, on, in the view dropdown, you have uh, hide corner widget turned on. So you want it to, well, you wanna make sure you show the corner widget. So don't hide it. And if it is hidden, go check that out. And if you're in CS6 or earlier, why don't you make a regular rectangle for this one? Because the corner widget isn't available to you. So we're gonna create a regular rectangle and click on that rectangle, go to effect, stylize, round corners. And you can do the same exact thing. So we have the corner widget uh, pixels up here. Now I can actually preview and select a, a radius. Let's try 50 and see what that is. Oop. 50 is pretty decent. I might use 50 for this other one too. So you can do round corners, 50 pixels and hit okay. And now you have 50 pixels rounded on that. And we're going to select this shape and do the same thing. And you'll notice we have this same exact result. So we've got our two rounded rectangles and really the process is the same. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Let's turn it white with no stroke. And we're gonna place it on top of our rectangle. Right now it's behind it because in the layers it's behind it. So I'm gonna use shift command right bracket to bring it all the way forward. You could also right click and select arrange, bring to front. And we're going to scale this down so that it fits nicely within this rectangle. And then we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and align it just to make sure everything's all centered up but I do think that it would be a good idea to bump it over just a little bit. After I have the triangle centered up in my rounded rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and hold option and shift and drag it over into the center of my other rectangle as well, because there are actually two ways I wanna show you how to knock out the triangle from this rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and move these rectangles up just so visually you guys can see what's happening. So if I select both of these shapes, I can open up my Pathfinder tool and underneath shape modes, select minus front. When you hit that, it's going to minus whatever shape is in front of the other, the two of the two shapes you have selected, it will minus the front shape. 
from the shape behind it. So it knocked out a triangle from our shape. And you'll see that you can actually see through that now. With this second rectangle, we're gonna take a little bit of a different method and it might be my favorite method called the shape builder tool. But before we do that, we actually need to expand the appearance of this rectangle and I'll show you why. So with the shape builder tool, you need to select both objects and then go grab it from the toolbar over here. It's like two circles with a little arrow underneath it. You can also use shift M as a shortcut key. Notice how it actually can see which what shapes there are that uh, even overlapping shapes and things that we have going on here. Now what you can do is hold option and notice how the little icon changes to a minus. You can actually subtract shapes from your compound selection that you have. So if I minus the triangle, you're gonna find out why we need to expand the appearance of the rectangle because the rounded corners effect is now applied to that minus out triangle shape. So let's go back to uh, undo that. I'm gonna click on only the triangle and go to object, expand appearance. And now our rectangle is the exact same as this rectangle in shape. And what we can do is select everything, use shift M and then hold option to minus out the triangle shape. Now we have the same result, uh, a couple different methods of getting there. So if you guys are on uh, Illustrator CC, there's one way to get there with the corner widget and the shape builder tool um, or the pathfinder tool. And then if you are in on CS6 or earlier, uh, use the uh, use the style effect round corners if you want to get that same effect. So that's our three play buttons. And what you can do with each of these, we started off with just the triangle, but what you guys can do with each of these play buttons is create all sorts of different shapes. So this is just a filled in shape. That could have as easily been a circle. It could be a square. This could be this play button. Uh, instead of a circle and vice versa. So you can take these and iterate on them and create any type of play icon that you want. That's it for this tutorial. If you guys wanna see more tips and tutorials from me, subscribe to Pixel and Bracket, hit that little subscribe button down there or on the next end screen, just hit the, uh, hit the circle with the logo in it.